In this podcast episode, we're talking with Devorah Zach, author of Networking for People Who Hate Networking. That's right. She's actually going to tell us why introverts have an advantage when it comes to networking because of one of our natural strengths. Let's do it. All right, now I'm excited to welcome our guest on to the podcast today, Devorah Zach. Devorah is the author of Networking for People Who Hate Networking, which is currently in its second edition. Devorah, welcome to the Engineering Career Coach podcast. Thank you. So Devorah, you were recommended to us by several of our listeners. Our, Our listeners, of course, are engineers and technical professionals. And they read your book for obvious reasons because a lot of us, you know, aren't that comfortable with <clears throat> networking. And so before we jump into some of the questions around networking, could you just kind of give our listeners a little bit about, about yourself, a little bit about your background and how you got into this topic? Sure. I'm a leadership development consultant and I have a company in its 23rd year called Only Connect Consulting, focusing on coaching, keynotes, uh, assessments, and many different topics in those in that arena, such as um, change and team development and so on. And networking really came to the top for a lot of my, um, my readers and my l- listeners that it hit home for many, many people. Uh, the subtitle of the book is a field guide for introverts, the overwhelmed and the underconnected. And it turns out globally, a lot of people f- would put themselves in those categories. And that's why um, the book is in um, a couple dozen languages now. <laughs> so yeah. you're not alone if you're, if you ain't networking. <laughs> that's that's no that that is good to know again our, like i said our listeners are really you know technical and and often as technical professionals we are highly analytical and can be introverted so i guess first question for you is what can you know our audience do to kind of build their confidence to help them be comfortable enough to get out there and network so the first step is to learn about your own personality style to to learn about Um, where you are in the introvert expert spectrum, which the book has an easy assessment beginning. And the next is to understand what the real differences are between introverts and extroverts. There's a lot of misconceptions. And then the third step is to accept who you are, to work with instead of fighting against your natural temperament. And if you do believe you're an introvert or know you're an introvert or suspect you might be an introvert, um, I just want to get one thing out in the open. Introverts do not need to be fixed. (laughs) So this is not about getting you to be like someone else. It's about getting you to understand, accept, and work with yourself and to be totally authentic in all your networking while honoring uh, what you need to be successful rather than following rules that don't work for most people. That's great. And I, I think that that assessment in your book could be very helpful to our listeners, because I think one of the kind of misnomers out there is that all engineers are introverts, which, you know, I don't think is true, but I think sometimes people just say, I'm an engineer, so I must be an introvert, but they're not really sure. And so any kind of assessment or, you know, something that they can look at in course to help them figure out where they are in that spectrum, I think could definitely, definitely be helpful. And and one of the things that you say in your book is that the, the very traits that make you hate networking can, can be harnessed to forge an approach even more effective than maybe traditional techniques. Maybe you could talk about that a little bit. Sure. So let's start by talking about what the actual traits are that distinguish introversion from extroversion. Uh, So some people think that introverts are somehow less secure, uh, less successful, lower energy. None of that is true. There are only three real differences between introverts and extroverts. One is that introverts prefer one-on-one interactions and extroverts prefer group interactions. Um, The next is that introverts energize alone and extroverts energize with others. Uh, There's also, well, those are kind of a corollary to each other. There's also that introverts think to talk and extroverts talk to think. And the last one is that introverts go deep, extroverts go wide. That means introverts prefer deeper interactions, deeper relationships, deeper uh, types of interests. Extroverts prefer more activity, more breadth, more going on, more action, more people. And those are the only main differences. They, they make a tremendous difference in how we communicate and relate to the world. However, you'll notice what I didn't say. I didn't say that one was type A or type B personality. I didn't say one was going to be more successful as a leader than the other. None of that is linked whatsoever. So to get to your question right before I explain the differences was how can you leverage those traits? So if you're an introvert and you think, well, Deborah just said that I um, think to talk instead of talking to think. Doesn't that mean that I'm going to be a bad networker because networking requires interactions with people that are seem spontaneous. So that is not the solution. The idea is not to say, oh, I think to talk, therefore I don't need to network or I can't network or I'm terrible at it. 
It's to say, okay, this is a fact. I happen to have a temperament that means that I think before I talk. So that means I'm, instead of wishing that wasn't true or pretending that's not true, I accept that that's true. And therefore, before I go to an event, whether it's online or in person, I prepare questions that are interesting to ask. I prepare responses to the typical questions I might be, be expecting others to ask me. I, I prepare so that when I'm ready to go, I've practiced, I've paced myself, and I have great conversations with people. Hmm. That's interesting because basically what I'm hearing from all that is it's not that one is necessarily better than the other at networking. It's that the introverts and extroverts just take different approaches to it. That's right. And I, a lot of extroverts that I work with say to me, oh, Devor, I'm, I'm a fantastic networker. I can talk to anyone about anything. And to that, I generally reply, and it's a, it's a lovely trait to be able to talk to anyone about anything. It does not necessarily translate, however, it's not equated with being a great networker. Um, networking has to do with how meaningful, mutually beneficial, lasting relationships, building those one person at a time. Uh, it doesn't mean that quantity is the most important thing. Really, quality is the most important. That's great because actually, you know, the word networking does get thrown out there quite a bit in the world today and especially in the corporate world. And, you know, I think a good place to always to start when you're talking about something is, you know, what does it actually mean? So, you know, having you kind of break it down like that in terms of meaningful relationships, I think is a great way to do it. Because again, just because you're an introvert may just mean, like Devorah said, you're going to have a couple deeper conversations and you're going to have a couple deeper relationships as opposed to someone who may just go wider and say, hey, I talked to 20 people at the networking event. That was a great event for me. Well, exactly. was it, you know, or was it not? So Exactly. I say um, connect, don't collect. So there when you're go. meeting with people, connect with them is way more important than collecting business cards or collecting names and so on. Also, when you're thinking about what is networking, a lot of people think it's very negative connotation. So they're almost, it's almost a, a a point of pride that I might say I hate networking. Well, that's because I might think that it's about shameless self-promotion or about manipulating people. But in fact, real networking is none of those things. Real networking is about connecting deeply and lasting relationships, not dazzling people in one night and then never being in touch with them again. Yeah. And that's what I often tell engineers when we're talking about networking or building relationships. A lot of engineers that I know will go to like their monthly association meeting. They'll get a bunch of business cards. They'll kind of put them on their desk and they'll kind of think to themselves like, all right, I did my networking for the month. And what I try to tell them is, listen, getting those cards, making those initial contacts, I think is like maybe like your first step in terms of like a networking process. And then you need to kind of build relationships beyond that. And again, like to Devorah's point, if you go to a networking event, you talk to 20 people, the odds of you building 20 deep relationships are very low. So you're going to have to, you know, probably pick a few people and, you know, focus your energy on those couple of people. Would you agree with that? Yes, I do. And, and the, the, even the thought of, and I'm an introvert. So even the thought for me too, to thinking I need to go to an event and, and connect with or meet 20 new people is overwhelming. It makes me not want to go. And, and, and it seems totally daunting and, and just out of sync with who I really am. So what I r always uh, suggest is you research in advance before you go to an event or a program and narrow it down to two or three people that you really want to connect with based on what you've learned. Reach out in advance. See if you can meet for a cup of coffee instead of going with a huge group to a steak dinner that's going to last three hours that most introverts would dread. So um, to your point, uh, just because you've collected let's say 20 cards, that doesn't mean really anything about your ability to network. What really tells us about your networking expertise is what happens in the next day or two after the event. Yeah, that's great. And, and one of the things that you also mentioned in your book, Devorah, is that you don't succeed kind of by denying your natural temperament in networking. You succeed by kind of working with your strengths. And where I see this is very applicable to engineers, which you already referenced earlier, is that you know, a lot of us as engineers are researchers, right? We like to go deep into topics. So if you're thinking about building two deep relationships, you know, some of those skills that you've learned in terms of researching and going deep on topics can translate, I think, very well to networking as opposed to us saying like, oh, I'm an engineer. I'm like analytical. I can't do this. Well, maybe actually your ability to go deep is going to be what's kind of like a superpower here. Yes. And what you can't do are is the advice that a lot of um, so-called networking experts 
offer up, which is like to ne never spend time alone or to uh, more is more. And that is stuff that we as introverts can't do and really shouldn't ever try to do because we'll crash and burn. So instead, it goes back once again to respecting your energy. So if I say, oh, I should talk to everyone in this room or I should go to every program in this three day conference, listen inside your head. And when you're saying to yourself, I should do this, I should do that, it almost always means you should not. <laughs> so uh, if, if I'm saying, you know what, the truth is I get depleted with my energy. So I need to manage my energy and focus on what's most important for me at this event. So just a quick story that happened to me in real life and other similar things have happened to me frequently, but this one in particular, I was keynoting at a conference and my keynote topic was networking. I do talk about other topics too, but, <laughs> um, and some, some women met me before the, uh, the big keynote address and sort of said hello. And then I went off and I was sitting alone in the cafe with no one near me, just like reading. And they came by and they go, they were laughing. They go, oh, is this how you network? Ha ha ha. Catching me, you know, sitting there alone. And I said, yeah, this is exactly how I do it. This is how I can be good when I'm doing the keynote. And, and then we all just laughed. But so it takes a little bit of guts sometimes to honor who you are, but go off by yourself, um, give yourself downtime. Uh, and respect that so you can get your energy up when it really matters. Yeah, and I like that point a lot because I also think that when someone goes to a conference, let's say, for example, you know, there's lots of engineering conferences, engineers will go, there's, you know, hundreds, thousands of people there. And I think sometimes because of the perception of networking, like we talked about earlier, which is, you know, just get out there and talk to a lot of people, you feel a pressure at a conference that, you know, you got to go to these big events, you got to be around a lot of people, you got to network. And if you're following kind of what you said earlier in terms of focus on making some deep relationships, then you really don't have to worry about that. Some of that pressure can go, go away and you can just say, all right, I'm going to go back to my room, refresh, recharge, and I'm going to go back down and try to focus on those couple of people that I really wanted to connect with. Sure. And also to look for opportunities that will put you in your best light. So many people who don't like networking will uh, procrastinate and show up late to the networking event. And then they'll walk into the exact scenario that they despise, which is noisy, tons of people, everyone's already in conversation, uh, crowded, and you're just going to want to leave, sneak out. Um, instead, a lot of my advice is counterintuitive. What I recommend is if you don't like networking, get there a couple minutes early before most people are there. It's going to be quiet. People aren't already in conversation with big groups. It's not crowded. You can have a deeper conversation one-on-one -on -one with someone and then you can leave early too if, you, if that's part of your master plan as a, as a present to yourself. <laughs> so um, also thinking about, oh, I, I don't like to talk about myself. Maybe I'm really private, uh, which is a trait that many introverts have. Then uh, think of great questions. A lot of introverts are known for being really good listeners. Uh, however, with that in mind, be, think of a few things you might be willing to share about yourself because conversations and relationships can get a little lopsided if you're only asking and not offering anything up. So again, in advance, think of what are some things I could say about myself that I'm okay with. And um, so again, there's I have millions of tips I could talk all day, but <laughs> no, there's a few of them right there. <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, I think, I think that one about showing up early, I like that a lot because an introvert that shows up to an event with a lot of people can obviously they can create some stress and it could be a little bit more difficult to get around the room and, and connect with people. Whereas if you get there early, you kind of have your pick and there's a few people and you can connect with them on that deeper level. I think really what like the running theme is becoming of this conversation is really making those deep connections, which introverts, I feel like we can do that because we have that deep thought process, you know, that connection that, um, of going deep. So, th so that's, that's, Good news, I think, for, for a lot of our listeners. However, to switch oh, good news. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, to switch gears for a minute, though, we have a lot of students as well that listen to the podcast, right? And they're kind of preparing, of course, to enter the workforce and, and they want to start networking and building their professional network. How can they make a good impression or how can they approach this process in, in a positive way? Okay, so let's say you're a student and you're, for example, looking for a mentor, and, you're, and I, I work with lots of engineers, by the way, <laughs> and you're, you're looking for a mentor, and um, how do you set yourself apart? How do you make that person want to, you know, have a relationship with you? And I, again, it's stuff that introverts are great at, is to research a little bit about that person, show that you know about them, that it, you know, it's not just some generic question, I just want anyone to be my mentor or to help guide me, uh, but let them know why you contacted them and make it as easy as possible for someone to say yes. So if I'm like, oh, you know, if I'm vague, that's not good. 
if I'm asking for what sounds like too much to you, if you're someone senior to me that I want to create a connection with. Uh, so make it easy for them to say yes and be concrete and specific and show that you've researched that person and that you're seeking them out for a reason, that they're just not one of many, many people. So uh, that's, that's great. one that's thing. I like that Another thing is for introverts to also, when you're, when you're with, a, with a group of people, let's say you don't know the, the people in advance and, and you want to kind of get to know them. So one important thing to remember is whoever you're talking to, especially at like a, a, an event where you want to network, decide that the person you're talking to is the right person for you to be talking to at this moment. So often we have preconceived notions of who the right person is and think, oh, this person's not so interesting or won't help me in my career. Um, oh, a great thing to do is to think, this person is the right person for me to be talking to right now, maybe not forever, but in this next 10 minutes or so. And my job is to find out why, what, what can we learn from each other? And that will ensure that you're the right person for other people to be talking to. That's great. Great advice. I really like that that part about, you know, doing the research on someone before you approach them, especially if you're trying to find a mentor, you know, for a student or a younger engineering professional. That's really important. I'm, I'm a big believer in mentoring, you know, finding the right mentor in your career. I think it can really help you in terms of your development. However, I do think it's difficult sometimes to approach people, of course, and ask someone, but, you know, following Devorah's advice there. And really, I mean, there's plenty of resources today, LinkedIn or whatever the case may be in terms of learning about someone before you reach out to them that can really make all the difference in your connection with them and the response that they give you. So yeah. And I want to throw in there, don't be afraid to ask. Um, so many people self-eliminate. They're like, oh, this person's way too important, way too busy, um, way too sought after. It doesn't hurt to ask. And especially ask in a, in a concrete, meaningful way. And uh, let them decide that they don't want to do it. But don't you decide for them that they might not be interested in talking to you. That's right. That's what I always tell my kids. Never assume it, it makes you know what <laughs> you and me. But uh, now the people make assumptions and it's not good because just because someone's a president of a company doesn't mean that they don't want to give back and, and mentor you know, a younger engineer. And you, you'll actually be surprised more times than not than the people that I've talked to that, that are being more than willing to help out um, when needed. So Devor, I want to, kind of go down this road a little bit. A lot of engineers go to quote unquote networking events, professional association events, lunchtime, breakfast, happy hour, whatever it is. They make that initial contact that we've talked about already here. Then there's this process, right? Of deepening the relationship like you mentioned. So, you know, what are some steps that people can take beyond the initial meeting with someone to try to deepen a relationship if they do say, all right, listen, there's two or three people that I really want to develop relationships with. How do you recommend going about that process? Okay. So first you make the initial contact like we've established. And then the most important thing you can do is follow up because if you're not following up, you're not networking. So let me repeat myself. If you're not following up, it's not even networking. So that's how important that is. So you, you've, you've met someone, you, you want to follow up, Okay, but maybe you can't really keep track of who the different people are that you met at the event. So let's just back up a little bit and put you back in the moment where you've just made contact with someone who is potentially a valuable network um, opportunity for you. Uh, then we tend to overestimate our own memories. So we might think, oh yeah, yeah, it was great talking to Anthony and I'll, I'll write him next week. And the next day I, have, I look at these four or five cards I collected and I have no idea which one that person was. So we tend to forget about half of what we hear within 48 hours. So what I recommend you do at the event is if after you've met someone who you really want to follow up with, and it doesn't have to be everyone, just it might be one person or two people, uh, just take a moment to yourself. So added bonus, you get a little downtime and write on their card or write on a something that you'll re remember that it's linked to this person. Uh, a few things about the conversation, something, a topic you discuss, something they're interested in, maybe how to pronounce their name or, or um, an a, a extracurricular they're interested in, in doing on the weekends. And then when you follow up, all of a sudden you've given this great gift to yourself. You're like, oh yeah, I, I remember now. He, he's really, really into, into soccer. So you, you have some, so it's very authentic and, and meaningful and it shows to them you're really following up with them for a reason. It's not just generic email. And then always think, what can I do for the other person? Even if they're more senior than you or seem super important, there's always something that um, you can do for them. So instead of asking for something right away, offer something. And uh, it can be any number of different things. It can be tangible, um, like 
something really specific that uh, that they said that they are interested in, or it could be an article that they might be want to read or another person to connect them with. But put your position yourself as someone helpful, not someone demanding. That's great. And and so, you know, following up on that a little bit. So you meet the person, you make some notes about what they like, you know, sports or whatever the case may be. And then in terms of follow-up, I mean, you could email, like what, what are some approaches you could take in terms of keeping okay. in touch with so them? So first I would say, um, and I'll get to the email uh, possibility in a minute. Uh, you want to follow up within two days. So uh, if while you still remember each other, so <laughs> while they right. remember you and you remember them, except if you, especially if you're seeking something uh, like a mentorship, it's the one day to kind of avoid non-essential emails or follow up with non-essential to the other, from the other person's opinion is Monday. People tend to be the most overwhelmed on Mondays. So if you meet someone on a Saturday, for example, just wait until Tuesday. Otherwise, just in, in a really short time, um, turnaround time. And then, uh, yeah, I think emails is still a great way to follow up. I, I, I but you want to make your email short, concise, and to the point, not rambly. Uh, but I think emails is a fine way to follow up. If it's something really meaningful that someone already did for you, uh, maybe they they got you an internship or something that it's it's a bit bigger deal. I think a great I call it the secret weapon of networking is a handwritten note. Not, not all the time, but if you really want to show that you something was very important to you, maybe it was just listening to the speech the person gave and it, it really uh, hit some key points that you really learned a lot that you plan to implement back at the lab, uh, then write a quick little handwritten note. It doesn't take any longer than email and it does make a great impression. That's great. And so in terms of like longer term maintenance now, right? Like this is someone you met six months ago, you followed up with them, you've had little interactions here and there. It's just like, you know, keeping in, just trying to keep in touch with these couple of people. Maybe you've identified that you want to build deeper relationships. Just keep some kind of regular cadence and to, you know, you find something that's of interest to them. Maybe you send it to them. Is that just something that you should try to do with people? Yes. And this is a real art, uh, the art of following up. And actually there's a brand new chapter in the second edition of networking for people who hate networking uh, just on this very topic, follow up and um, about getting into more of the nuances of what to do and what to avoid. Um, but the broad strokes are you do want to stay in touch. You don't want to overstay in touch. Uh, it, when you're looking, especially if you're looking for a, a new job or a promotion or something, it's, it's way more on your radar than anyone else's. So you might think, oh, I haven't heard from them in three days. I'll just, you know, touch base again. So you don't want to be a pest. <laughs> right. And it's okay. And if they don't get back to you, on the other hand, it doesn't mean that they don't like you or they think you're annoying. It might just be they're really, really busy. So on the one hand, you don't want to overdo it. But on the other hand, don't throw up your hands in the air and say, forget it. I'm, this person's not interested just because that you haven't heard from them. So stay in touch, you know, it depends on, again, the situation. If you're asking someone to write you a letter recommendation, that's more urgent and time dependent than if you just want to be in each other's social network. Uh, so I would say just light touches and know that it might take a long time for some connections to come to fruition. There's been people that I've kept in touch with who I met maybe at a conference for a couple, two, three, even more years. And then all of a sudden we're doing work together. So hmm. patience is also a virtue. Sure. And I think to Devorah's point earlier, you know, when you're thinking about following up with people, you know, you always want to, of course, keep your messages, you know, briefly said concise, but also offer that value, right? So maybe there's an article that came out about some new guidelines and you know that it's going to affect a couple of people. You can send them a short email saying, hey, did you see these new guidelines that might affect your projects? Or if there's a new software that came out that you maybe work, do work with an architect and he or she might benefit from that software. It's a perfect time to reach out and say, hey, I hope things are going well. I saw this software, thought it might be helpful for you and your projects. I think that's important because it gives a great reason to get in touch with them. And, you know, it's a reason where you're providing value to them. So it's not just, hey, how's it going? It's, hey, thought you might like this. I hope things are going well. I know for me as an engineer, when I was practicing, that approach was very helpful for me. Yeah, and it makes you memorable and it positions you as not only someone helpful, but someone also who's, who's thoughtful and generous and think creatively around it. So for example, people are often asking me, oh, can I grab a cup of coffee with you and pick your brain on you know, networking or managing or single tasking or one of the, my bigger topics. And, and 
I do it when I can. I can't always do it, but uh, a woman asked me to, to meet with her and I said, sure. And she said, well, if in case I get there before you, what do you usually order at the cafe? And I told her, well, she surprised me and um, got there early and got a beautiful like take home mug, got it filled with the drink I said I liked and gave it to me as a thank you present when I arrived. Relatively small gesture, doesn't cost a lot of money, but I drank out of that mug for a few years and <laughs> thought of her. <laughs> and I remember who she is as opposed to other people I might have forgotten about. So just also think it can be something like that too. Um, it doesn't have to be um, a typical thank you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've done the same thing with people where I've given them like a book, not my book, but just a book that I thought would be helpful for one of the challenges that they were struggling with. And they used the book effectively. And mm -hmm. for a long period of time, they kept saying, well, you know, Anthony, you gave me that book and it really changed the game for me in terms of my productivity or whatever the case may be. So certainly gestures like that can go a long way. And they really do provide a great way to build the relationship with people, to deepen the relationship with people, which is really what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Which, Again, as I said earlier, this has really become kind of a theme of this episode. All right. So what we're going to do now is we'll take a, a short break. We'll come back with Devorah and we'll wrap things up in our take action today segment. All right. So we're back with Devorah Zach, author of Networking for People Who Hate Networking, currently in its second edition. And we've talked quite a bit about how introverts can network and really build deep relationships. And what we want to do here to wrap it up for you is we want to go a little bit deeper in terms of helping you get out there because I know it can be a struggle for a lot of introverts to do that. So Devorah is going to share a story with us from a client that she worked with. Deciding you want to change or improve your networking abilities and, and comfort with networking uh, is really about setting goals for yourself. And a lot of goals we don't achieve because they're poorly formed, meaning they're not concrete. So by way of example, I was working with a senior executive at a Fortune 100 company who wanted to network better and he was an introvert and we could have just said, okay, try harder. Let's touch base in three months, but we would have no way of knowing whether or not he'd accomplish his goal because it was intangible. So instead we made it very structured um, and very specific. We said in the next three months, twice a month, that he would invite someone to have coffee or tea with him for half an hour and someone he didn't know well that he'd like to get to know better. In his case, it was someone in his in his office, but it could be for you, uh, whatever is meaningful to you. And it was a great goal because it was challenging but achievable. So as an introvert, it was challenging to say, okay, I'm gonna do this six times in the next three months, but it wasn't overwhelming. It didn't say every day and it wasn't too easy just once. So he liked that amount, that structure. And then it was something he could literally check off his list of things to do. So at the end of each month, he had either done it twice or he hadn't. And it kept him really focused on it. And he was able to achieve the goal of meeting and getting to know and getting started on networking relationships with six people in a period of three months. That's great. And that's actually perfect for, I'm speaking as an engineer myself. I think that's perfect for engineers because we like structure. We like to be able to see what we want to accomplish, check it off when it is accomplished and just have mm -hmm. some kind of process to follow. So again, I think this can really apply to a lot of things for engineers, but we're talking about networking here and coming up with some networking goals. You know, listen, if you're shy, uncomfortable networking right now, start with small goals, accomplish those smaller goals, get in touch with a couple of people and then expand them as you become more and more comfortable. And I think absolutely, really, absolutely. Right, well small said. steps. Mm hmm small steps. And also I think, you know, every small step you take, you build a little more confidence and that confidence will help you help kind of grow and grow. And so I really think this conversation that we're having here, what I've taken out of it is understand the meaning of networking, which is, you know, building deep relationships with people, not building a lot of relationships necessarily, which I think sometimes is confused and, um, you know, take your time with it. But be consistent with it and follow up with it and do those things. And if you have to use a process, use a process. Devora, we thank you so much for spending a little time with us here and for sharing some of your thoughts around networking. Again, the book is called Networking for People Who Hate Networking. It's currently in its second edition. And as Devora said, there is kind of an assessment in the beginning of the book that will help you figure out where you are in the introvert, extrovert spectrum, which can be you know really critical in terms of what steps you might want to take in terms of networking. And again, Deborah, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please leave your comments and or questions in the comments section below this video. Also, if you'd like to view the full show notes for this episode, visit engineeringmanagementinstitute.org or see the link in the video description. There you will find the key points discussed in today's episode as well as links to any of the resources, websites, or books mentioned during the episode. Until next time, I wish you the best in all of your engineering career endeavors.